Welcome to our review on electronic structures. So the first thing we really need to consider here is how elements are arranged in the periodic table. So some of this is hopefully going to be a nice recap of work you've done lower down the school. First thing we need to know is where we find periods. So the periods are the horizontal rows. Now you do need to go careful with this one when looking at the periodic table in your exam because a lot of people often start counting with lithium as period one. In fact, lithium is in period two because you've got hydrogen and helium at the top there that form the first period, so go careful. Second one is the groups. Those are the vertical columns, and you will have two possible numbers associated with them. So you might have learnt it as groups one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight or zero. So those are the non-IUPAC group numbers or you've got the ones that are the IUPAC group numbers which go from 1 to 18 as you can see in the diagram at the bottom there. Now what we do find is that any of the elements that are in group together, so any of those elements in group 1 for example, have similar chemical properties and that's all down to the arrangement of the electrons being similar. So now if we go on to consider how the electrons are arranged in atoms. As we've already discussed back in C1, the electrons are actually arranged in shells around the nucleus. Now, the actual electronic structure shows how those electrons are arranged. So, when we're talking about this, we're going to use this phrase outer shell. Now, that's just referring to the outermost occupied shell of the atom. So, what we actually have are a few rules we've got to remember for the number of electrons that we find in each shell as we work out from the nucleus. So the first shell, the one closest to the nucleus, can hold a maximum of two electrons. The second shell, so the next one out, can hold a maximum of eight electrons. Third shell is a maximum of eight electrons. And the fourth shell is a maximum of 18 electrons. So two, eight, eight, 18. Generally speaking, on your exam, they're not really going to go above the two, eight, eight. Anything else just goes in the fourth shell, so it's nice and simple to remember. So if we have a look to see how we actually use this to work out electronic structure. On the periodic table, you'd find that sodium has 11 electrons. That's its atomic number. So that tells us the number of electrons. Now, when we're actually drawing the arrangement of these electrons, we always use a cross to represent the electrons. OK, so what you're going to do is you start with the innermost shell and we're going to put a maximum of two electrons. So because we've got 11, that has two. Then the next shell comes out and that can hold eight electrons. So eight crosses go in and then we've just got one electron left. So in our third shell, we have our one cross. Now, the last bit to do is you write down the actual electronic structure as numbers. So that would be 2.8.1. So we use the dots to represent the fact that we're going from one shell to the next. So always make sure you include the actual numerical electronic structure as well, not just the drawing. Once you've actually worked out that electronic structure, that does give you quite a lot of information about that particular atom. So the first thing is we've actually got three numbers there and the number of numbers, i.e. three in this case, tells you what period that can be found in on the periodic table. So sodium is in the third period. The last number in its electronic structure is going to be its non IUPAC group number. So in this case, it's the number one, therefore sodium is in group one. And that also tells us the number of electrons in the outer shell, because whatever the group number is, that tells us how many electrons are in the outer shell there. And then finally, if you add up all those numbers, we've got our atomic number. So two plus eight plus one gives us 11, which is the atomic number of sodium. Hopefully at the end of this video, you now know where you will actually find the elements on the periodic table how they're arranged into the groups and the periods, and that you can also draw the electronic structures for each of them and interpret it in terms of what period it's in, what the atomic number is, what group number it's in.